a ladder here and a ladder there, we're getting up in this world. We already have 200 watts of solar in this tiltable panel here. And uh, today we're going to be adding another 200 watts in a non-tiltable panel. And I wanted to talk to you about how much solar do you actually need by explaining how much solar we actually need and why. How much could we actually get away with? Why are we adding another 200 watts? Do we actually need another 200 watts? <laughs> That's 400 watts on this little trailer. What it boils down to is once you've installed solar on the roof of your trailer and you already made the hole and the wires go down and it goes down to a controller and then from there on to a battery, it's really simple to add another panel. You don't have to drill any more holes in your roof and it's not very expensive because all you're doing is buying the panel, the mounts and, um, and the uh, Y connectors to tap into the existing circuit. We're going to do that today. I'm going to show you how easy it actually is. First of all, when it comes to solar, more is always better. Now, that being said, Linda and I can actually get by on a 500 watt uh, power station. This is a 700 watt Blue Eddy EB70. We can actually get by on, on a 500 and we can get by on a 100 watt portable solar panel. But that's in perfect ideal conditions. Today is a beautiful sunny day. What happens if you get a rainy day or two or three? Now, if you're mounting solar on your roof and it's a non-tiltable panel, then that 100 watt portable panel needs to be something like, if it's roof mounted, it needs to be more like a 160 or a 200 watt roof panel if you can't tilt it. Because I've already shown in a previous video, tilting the panel to angle at the sun makes a huge difference. So if you're a flat mounted panel, you're going to need more than that 100 watt portable panel that I mentioned. Now, if you get a rainy period like we run into, because we always head out of here in the winter time for Arizona and we spend some time in, well, you know, you get your rainy days, even in Arizona it can, down at Quartzsite, it can pour and that can last three or four days. Now you're going to want even more solar yet. You see, and that's where we're at. We don't need another 200 watts. Of, we don't need a total of 400 watts of solar on the roof. That 200 watt panel has been, been doing just fine, except for those rainy days. So we think adding another 200 watts to the roof will help take care of those days. That's the idea. Now we do have portable panels and we use those a lot. I've got that Blue Eddy uh, 120 watt panel that I use mostly when, you know, outdoors because it's so compact. It's, and also that Idehill panel I showed you is also another good one. Uh, they, they fold up like a little briefcase, so why not have those around? And you can, if you're parked in the shade, you can take those out and point them at the sun. And yeah, they work really well. But it's nice just to have solar just mounted on your roof and ready to go. And if you're doing that, add as much as you can. Now that uh, solar is down, oh, gee, I guess it's about a dollar a watt. That's not too bad. So the cost of putting on a second panel, if you already have one, is uh, very uh, reasonable. Now we're doing something different this time. The panel that I've got mounted up there right now is screwed to the roof. This time we're going to use the adhesive mounts and we'll see how that goes. But enough of the talk. Let's get down to the installation. The panel I'm going to be using is a Nexpower model NPA210S12H, and it's almost identical to the panel that's on the roof. That's also a new power panel up there, and it's uh, 200 watts. This is 210 watts, and they're within a quarter of a volt of each other, so I think they're going to match up okay. Uh, but the one that I have on the roof is, uh, is discontinued, so this is the new model. Here's the mounting hardware it takes to do this. Um, first of all, the uh, adhesive I'm using is this Sikaflex 252. This stuff grips like nobody's business. If you get this on your clothing, you just throw that piece of clothing away. You can never get it off. 
it's only you can only cut it with acetone and that is only until it starts to cure once it starts to cure you have to wear it off <laughs> so wear gloves when you use this i'm not afraid of this stuff uh, coming loose on the roof this is the mounting hardware and it's designed for use with adhesive this is made by a company named you pronounce it it's simi anglin or something like that but uh I thought when I got this that I was going to have to take like 80 grit sandpaper and rough the bottom up, but it already has a matte finish on it, so it's designed for it. You don't have to do anything. All you got to do is use it. The one thing you have to do is you have to drill the holes because every panel is different, so they give you a little bit of leeway there so you can drill the hole in a slightly different place. So you glue it down to your roof, but it gets mounted to your panel with screws. Now, you can mount it to your panel with the same adhesive, but if you do that, you'll never get these corners and these uh, mounting brackets off of your panel. So if something goes wrong with your panel and you have to replace it, you're in trouble that way. So I'm going to use adhesive to mount the panel to the roof, but I'm going to use screws to mount the panel to these mounts. It does come with a gland for going through the roof, but I won't be using it because my wiring is already through the roof with a gland just like this one. The screws that this comes with are worthless. Uh, they're soft uh, stainless steel screws. They're supposed to be self-tapping, but they're not, so I'll be getting some better screws from the hardware store. You need two parallel connectors if you're doing two panels. So this end goes down, hooks up where it goes through the gland nut, and then both panels connect up here. If you had three panels, you would have three uh, connectors at this end. Four panels, you would have four, etc. This is an extension in case I can't mount this panel close enough to hook up without it. So just in case, I've got a three-foot extension here, although I don't think I'm going to need it. First thing I need to do is get a basic idea of where to drill these holes. Do I drill them in the center of this little circular area or higher up or lower down? Just by eyeballing it here, it looks like if I just center it inside the cutout there, it'll be just fine with the panel. So let's get started. I drilled the first hole and now I just kind of eyeballed it. I can kind of look through it and I can see these lines on here and I can see where it ended up. So I needed to make sure it didn't end up too close to the glass and it ended up basically in the center of the frame here and it does. Well to me I kind of view this as being the hardest part of the whole job. It's not hard. Now the hole I drilled is large enough so that the screw passes right through. I don't want it to bind into this, I want it to bind into the metal on the other side. One thing that made this hard, drilling these holes through here, see where I drilled the hole? Is that you have to drill through this vertical partition that's right in the center. That's just real poor design. And of course the drill bit goes off of that one way or the other. It doesn't go straight through. It, it doesn't really matter, but I just find that really odd that they did it that way when you're required to drill a hole through there. Well, I installed one corner and it worked out all right. So now it's time to install the rest. The screws I'm using are not just self-tapping, they're also self-drilling. They're not stainless, but I, they're used, the same type of screw is used all over these cargo trailers, and they seem to stand up pretty good. like I may need to pre-drill these holes.
when you pre-drill a hole, you choose a drill bit that's the same size as the inner shank of the screw, not the outside, but the inner shank, so that the threads can still get a bite. Well, that just made this job a whole lot more time consuming, but not difficult. I just have to pre-drill every hole, that's all. Of course, it would be nice if I had two drills. All right, well, there's one. Well, there's two actually. Well, I didn't have to pre-drill these ones in the center. And what I finally figured out was that the metal in the corners is double thick. So a self-drilling screw wouldn't, wouldn't go through there because it, uh, the threads start binding right away before the hole is punched all the way through. So remember, you can just squirt that same adhesive in here do that and wait a few hours and be done. <laughs> you don't have to do what I'm doing. But like I say, if you do that and then you mount this panel with adhesive down to the roof, you're not getting this panel out in case something happens to the panel. It would be really tough. So I think it's worth the extra steps here. Last screw. All right, well, I think that was the hard part and it's done. Now all I gotta do is haul it up to the roof, squirt the adhesive on the bottom and drop it into place where we want it to go. Um, yeah, that's it. Just guide it up to me as fur as you can. Well, that went pretty well. Okay, we laid the panel down first, made sure the wires were gonna reach. So I don't have to use that extender cable. Um, as long as I mount the panel a little words towards the center of the trailer a little bit. We marked out where it's gotta go, and now we're gonna spread that goop and see how this goes. I don't think there's any such thing as being neat about this. The electrical wire above my head is just the cable TV, not high voltage or anything like that. Drop it on the panel. Got it? Okay. Put on plenty. You got plenty to work with. All right. Now we stand it up on edge. And lift it. How you doing? And now put it in place. How are you doing? Yeah? Good? Yeah, let her down. You have to sit. Remember, you can't see because it's a shadow. Yeah, I know. And the wires are good.
kind of, can you pressure down a little bit, put some weight on it? Yeah, I do. Okay, I'm going to fill in the leading edges here. Well, the last thing I need to do is just hook up the wires to those Y connectors and then read, read the voltage. Oh, there is one more thing after that. I have to secure the wires, but I'm going to wait until that uh, adhesive is cured before I start messing around like that. I'm going to hook it up, though, and see how it works. That's it for the hookup. Okay, you can see my battery is currently at 13.7. It's fully charged, so we're not going to get a good reading off of this, but I can see that the solar panels are working. 17.6 volts is what's coming off the panels, and that's what I had before with a single panel, so even though they're a quarter of a volt different, uh, it's, it's, it's fine. Uh, 0.24 amps uh, coming into the battery. Once again, the battery's fully charged though. 100%. So I don't have a watt meter on this. So I can't really tell how many watts are coming in. I, I can hook up a power station and, and do that. Let me see what that looks like. And right now the Blue Eddy EB70 is getting 126 watts. And um, it shares the uh, wattage coming in with whatever goes out to whatever to other things that are going on uh, that are on in the trailer, like um, like the other battery and things like that. It's hooked directly to the solar panel, but it's upline from the Renogy controller, so it's, it's not going to get the full wattage from the panel. But it's doing good, 126 watts, and um, can't uh, can't complain. This will take up to 200 watts. Well, you can see that once you have a panel installed on the roof, it's really easy to add another panel. That panel should match the existing panel in voltage and wattage as much as possible. Anyhow, this only took a couple of hours total, including drilling the holes and, and everything. And with Linda's help, we got it up there all right. Hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you around.